Hello and welcome everyone. My name is Bart and together with Kuba here on my left, we're going to provide you, very excited to provide you with a webinar on sketch noting with Explain Everything. And we love this webinar for the reason that sketch noting is so easy with our tool. So we're going to provide you with some stunning examples of what you can do, uh, how you can sketch note, what is possible, including motion or just simple drawings and doodling using a digital whiteboard. Awesome. Yeah. Um, so a few uh, housekeeping items before we begin. We're going to provide you with a stream coming from my iPad. I'm going to use iPad today, but if you have your Android or iOS devices ready, you can try to replicate what I'm going to show you. If some of you that participate during the session would want to collaborate with us and practice with us, let us know on the chat. We can open collaborative session later during the webinar, but for now we're going to show you what happens on my screen. I have a project loaded with a lot of examples that I want to share with you. So that's why we're, we're basically going to provide you with illustrations, what is possible. Um, the other thing is that you can ask us questions as we go. Kuba is going to monitor those questions and we can provide you with answers um, almost in real time. So we can stop, pause, and provide you with explanations. So if there's anything of interest that you would want us to dig deeper, we're happy to do so. Right, so just use chat. I just posted a link in the chat. Uh, if you don't have explained everything yet, you can download it using the link uh, in the chat. And there you can ask your questions while Bart's presenting the content of today's webinar. Fantastic. So let me show you my screen. Okay. So as you see, let me show you what I provided here for you today. There's quite a bit. As you see, I opened on my project some examples that are on the left side of my screen. I also have some signs behind sketch noting to explain with you why doodling, why drawing um, is good to retain information, it's good to explore um, concepts, so we're going to cover that. We're, we're also going to show you some practical skills, those are illustrated here, on this process, just to prepare you for sketch noting on your own, so hopefully you can exchange paper with iPad or Android device and, um, and stylus, or let's call it pencil. So that's what we want to do. And let's begin with examples, just to show you what is possible. So we, because we're working on this digital whiteboard for, for quite some time, we accumulated a lot of <laughs> different, uh, quite um, interesting examples of how digital whiteboard can be used during the meetings. I like those that come from Rashan. These are the notes that he created uh, during meetings. As you see, I have a collection of those uh, doodles of his, including custom font um, descriptions of the items that you see on the screen. So those are quite uh, interesting to understand how you can mix text with pictures to explore concepts. Rashan, when speaking about his way of doodling, Rashan Ko, founder of Explain Everything, he mentions quite often that for him, this is the most natural way to express what um, the concepts and also store information of what happened during the meeting. There's a what would happen, how the meeting played out, uh, who participated, what was uh, the, the subject and the content. If you'd like to see him doing that, I suggest you to explore our webpage, as in the blog section, there's actually quite interesting video with Rashan speaking about him sketch noting on meetings. So those examples that I provide you with now, are illustrated here during this conversation 
with Rashan on this YouTube video. So that's what you can, you can check later on. For now, let's continue with examples of how sketch notes can be used during the meetings. So we often use whiteboard visuals, uh, whiteboard with the visuals and text and different medium, uh, media to, let's say, solve complexity. So when we discuss complex ideas, processes, dependencies, this is a very handful thing to have. Uh, whiteboard that does, does not have a limits of space, so we can use canvas to explore ideas, even working together. So that's, the, that's one example. The other is that I sometimes see people using physical means like, you know, pen and paper, and then, you know, having in your uh, backpack, tablet, device, we can always go beyond limitations of paper and continue digitally, even store in digital form those notes that uh, were taken on a paper. So that's an example of that. That's the example of going beyond the paper, right? Or here's another example of working on messaging. And I'm sure everyone has different style. It's that using uh, just canvas and pencil or uh, pen or stylus, there's not much difference between uh, working physically and digitally. Maybe one difference is, uh, is the space that you can use that is quite unlimited. If you see me, I can zoom out and zoom in. You don't have limits of format as you would have using paper. But if you consider what you can do in terms of recording, capturing the process of sketch noting, then there's a vast difference between what you can do on a paper and what you can do on a digital whiteboard. So for example, those doodles that you see here coming from Sean, they, you can also see them uh, unraveling concepts when Rashan is here speaking on a podcast with Greg Voison. He was, he was doodling at that time. And they were providing, um, that, it was an interview like 40 minutes long. This is a accelerated playback of how this conversation played out. So you can watch and observe um, Rashan going through the interview and illustrating concepts that they were discussing. What do you think about this example? Uh, oh, well, it's great. I mean, the, the, the close part is that this was done live, right? So, so yeah. Rashan could just press record, um, start a sketch noting, and using his own style, explore the, the conversation while it was going. So that's the that's the cool part. And now we can share it with you. So um, actually, we have this, uh, this whole uh, conversation recorded and along with the sketch notes. So we can, we can check it out. I'll, I'll share it on, on, uh, on our chat so we can, you can watch the whole thing and hear the interview where Rishan talks about well, it's his a, ideas and it's his, a his good, book. It's a good material for practice, right? Because it's a project made and explain everything that you can open for edit and see how those. Uh, you know, strokes and objects were created. So yeah, yeah. But that's one of few examples that we have because, you know, I often when speaking of sketch noting here, <laughs> that, you know, people don't like to do that because let's say they don't feel um, uh, that they can draw uh, well enough in order to express their ideas. But it's actually not about being an artist. It's rather being clear with even simple drawings as those coming from Rishan. But I can show you an example of sketch notes that are not so uh, heavily used as on, on this conversation. Here's another illustration of the, of the conversation that took place. That's what, that was my conversation with with a philosopher about content of his book. And as you see, sketch notes were used here, but not so often as on this previous example, as they were kind of like a add-on to the text and images used during the conversation. So you can think about your style, how 
you would want to use sketch notes on a meeting. For me, the, the range is quite vast. You can draw everything, trying to uh, illustrate concepts by simple drawings, or you can just use those drawings to, as you see here, link ideas or just illustrate something. So it's, it's, a, it's a question of mix. What do you think about this example here, Kuba? I was just posting uh, the link, <laughs> so I wasn't listening very, very well. Uh, yeah, what, yeah. What, what's your favorite style? Do you like, you know, be full on with drawing? Or? So yeah, yeah, because that's the that's where we go beyond the sketch noting, right? Because uh -huh. the sketch noting is is just um, like adding images to what's been to how you filter the information you get and show that with an image. This is more of a combination of everything that you, you can do and explain everything so that's that goes a little bit beyond mm -hmm. um, so I, I think it's 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 fine to explore the possibilities using explain everything and and finding a way for you to um, um, express ideas in a way so that your um, uh, your audience understand that better so this is this is the fun part actually because um, with all those possibilities, you can align with your audience in a better way, right? So it, you're yeah. not just relying on one, one style. You can explore more. So Absolutely. Yeah. So here's another example where the balance is between using existing assets and drawings to illustrate concepts. And as you see, this is also accelerated playback of a quite long conversation. And we browsed through scientific papers and illustrating some concepts. So, so Rashan used those drawings to illustrate them. I was actually using papers and quotes highlighted with explainer everything. So here's like a 50-50% mix of both techniques. Um, some of those moves, because eventually when we speak about doodling, sketch noting, uh, um, using explain everything, using whiteboard, we're speaking here about uh, recording the process of what you do on the canvas. So as you see here, here I captured the playback of, let's say, brainstorm session, and you see on the bottom of the screen, that everything that was provided on the screen got captured by Explain Everything. And you can see it on the timeline in this, uh, in this section. So we, today we're going to take it easy, show you simple techniques, how to create simple drawings, how to isolate them so you can move them around. And later, once you know how to do that, you can try to do the recording by pressing this button here, or here we see on the screen. So uh, the process of you creating images, representations, is captured by Explainer Everything. So you can play it back later, as I showed the, uh, using those examples. As every time the process of recording um, on those four illustrations, was done the same time, right? We just accelerated the playback to show you the end result so you get the picture of what is possible. But before we get that, though, I would like to show you a foundations of why sketch noting, why doodling. And to do that, I want to show you three reference points that uh, provide you with an answer of why sketch noting is useful. And the first one, those are the scientific papers that you can use later on to look into them, into details. We're going to just touch the surface here, but I'll share with the main concept. The first one speaks about the use of the so-called picture superiority effect. That this study basically shows that if you're presented with material in a form of, let's say, an audio here only, or in the form of audio supplemented with text, or in the form of audio supplemented with simple drawings, pictures, it is uh, usually that the third combination wins because of the picture superiority effect. 
uh, the and it's of course related to age group it does not work as well with, with young um, children but it works great uh, when you have uh, mental representations of reality as an adult uh, you're you can make best use of the picture representations of of concepts like those that we illustrated here the second piece of research, uh, of research shows a very interesting fact related to sketchnoting. Well, the study here uh, verified what happens, what's the retention and recall rate for those that were listening to information and just randomly doodling, like, you know, shading the boxes, right? And during the surprise uh, memory call test, they were, um, uh, the, the scientists here observed that the recall rate was actually quite higher than um, the rate coming from those that were not shading the boxes. So that's quite uh, astonishing that if you engage in this process of doodling, sketching, you can actually memorize better. And the third one that I want to show you is that drawing is actually something that is considered quite important in science, is a key element in science education because by drawing, we can explore concepts and by exploring concepts, we engage in a creative reasoning. And this creative reasoning is a, it's a, it's a distinct form of reasoning other than like, you know, it's a different from argumentation, but it's something that allows us to clear out concepts in our head and understand uh, the implications of those concepts. So those are illustrations here of drawings uh, created by 11 years old. The article was published by Science in 2011, so please check that out, as I think it has a very interesting impl implications. If you want to understand uh, what drawing does when learning, this is, a, this is a piece I suggest to look into. So far, so good. Do we have any questions uh, until now? No, not yet. Okay, great. We're good. So let us show you how to sketch note during the meetings where when you're learning concepts or when you want to present uh, something to others so they understand better. And for that, we prepared a simple process that we'll go through. And it's quite, uh, and it's something that we're going to also share with you as a project so you can practice later on uh, on yourself. It starts with creating a project. I'm already in the project and explain everything. So I'll use the same canvas to show you around, but the end the result of this process is going to, we're going to create a note and we're going to have fun doing that. So when doing a note on a digital canvas, we can use, before we get further into the process, one of the templates. And you can imagine using a uh, blank canvas like this, it's okay if you don't need any reference points, but you can also, pull any template from the web, or you can create one using explain everything for your own use. And it's, it's a question what you want to achieve. I just simply took some of uh, some examples from the web of the paper forms, paper formats uh, that are available. So if let's say we're going to use this one for our exercises, My uh, preference, to be honest, is not to use any uh, any templates. What's yours, Kuba? Yeah, I wouldn't use it either. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I need to use it now for you to show you one uh, interesting aspect of explain everything that we can drop it. So, so let's say we're going to make a note using this piece of paper here in a digital form. And we're going to add title. Let's say that's the, that's the note from our webinar. So the title I'm going to provide with a text tool. So the text tool is a tool that you see on the toolbar here. That's the icon with A. 
So I'm going to provide a title using this text tool. So that these are webinar notes and it's October 22nd, 22nd 2011, eight. I just created my notes here. So um, I want this to be, let's say, centrally uh, on the header of my uh, page. So I'm going to now use Inspector to group it together with the object underneath. So when I use my paper, it actually moves together with the title that I added. Okay. And now I'm going to draw something as a visual representation. Let's say we, we're speaking here about tablets. So I'm going to, to draw a tablet here. And I do this with a hand, uh, with, with a draw uh, tool that is located here on the toolbar. And as you see the draw tool, when you open the draw tool, you have all those colors that you can pick from and configure uh, to what you like and what, what, what you'll find useful in during making your notes. So I just created a tablet here, let's say with a green screen, right? And what I want to show you is that every time when you create a drawing on top of any other object, this drawing sticks to the object. So that's natural. If you would draw on a paper, the drawing would stick to the paper, right? Mm -hmm. But at any moment, you can disconnect what you have, what you draw from the object underneath to move it around. So let's say I, I want to create here a pencil, right? Because we're drawing with, um, I'm using Apple Pencil, but it might be a stylus for Android device, okay? So now I created a second object, of course it sticks, but I can use the inspector that is located here to disconnect this object by using ungroup, right? So I'm going to do that. I ungroup the stylus and I want to reposition it here, let's say, and group it again with the paper. So this is <laughs> with the digital paper, <laughs> with the digital imitation of the paper. So this is something that you can do that is not possible on a sheet of paper. You would have to remove what you drew and create another drawing, but with digital whiteboard, you can reposition those objects. So that's a good uh, skill to have. In the reality, when we are uh, doing notes with Explainer Everything, we don't use objects like this, rather, we use blank canvas. So let's say I want to create another object. This time it's going to be a computer, let's say laptop. Um, an old model, I would say, quite bulky. Uh, okay, so that's, that's a laptop. And I can grab this object with my two fingers and I, with, in no time I can manipulate it and move it around the canvas. So that's actually what you see on those examples coming from Rashan. Rashan does it quite often. He, as I saw him going, he's creating new objects and then he's moving them around to position them well on the canvas. Because you, in reality, when you're doing uh, sketch noting during the meetings, you don't know how much uh, space you'll have in the end, how many objects you need to create as you go. So this is quite nice that you can compose your image in a way that is flexible. You can move those objects around. Right, so just for a quick recap of that. So uh, in order to make a sketch note that it's movable, Bart um, selects draw tool from the toolbar that, that he presented, right? And he creates a, a drawing on the canvas. So while he uh, while the draw tool is selected, this is this remains a single drawing, right? So this is this uh, this block that he created mm -hmm. is a single drawing. And now, in order to move that drawing, he selects the hand tool here, and then he just moves the object with his with his fingers. So that's the you know that's the usual flow that you you will do while creating sketch notes. You draw something. 
change colors, add stuff, and then you select the hand tool and move it around. It's as simple as that. Just like that. And if you want those objects, let's say, to stick to the, to the paper underneath, all you need to do is to use Inspector and group them with those objects that you want to group with. So, so let's say I want to add this object to the paper. So I tap this object, I tap paper, and I select group. There is a simpler way to do it. So let's say if you want to add this object to this group of objects, I can just triple tap both like this. And you, if you see those circles in the middle of the screen, let's say now, if you see those circles, those are my triple taps. One, two, three, I disconnected this object from the group. One, two, three, I connected it again to the group. Okay, so we're here. So what we uh, provided you with is explanation how to use the draw tool. And we're going to send you this template later that has those nice animations that also explains how to use those tools. So that's the skill that we were just showing, the skill to draw using the whiteboard. There are some nice things that you can do that would not be possible on a paper. One of them is filling the empty spaces with the paint bucket. So let me show you how to do that. Of course, I could make it easy for me just showing you animations that we prepared for you. But let's try to do that. Let's do the sum together so we can add it to the objects that we have here. So in order to draw that, let me show you first uh, the drawer and the colors. I want to create sun with, let's say, yellow color, but then I would want to fill it with red. So as you see, you have five spaces for colors, but for each of those, you can select what should be the color of the stroke and what should be the color of the fill. So if stroke is yellow here, when I start to draw sun, That's the color that I see. But the moment I press this button here, I will fill the closed space with the background color selected here. Okay, so one more time, if I do that, I can now fill it with the background color. So I can change the color, let's say, to green. Oh, that would be silly. <laughs> that would not be sun. So that would be yellow now. Here it is. I have two shades of, of yellow, and I can, by that, quickly create a sun. So that's the fill tool. So for example, there is another way to fill objects with colors. So let's say that I created this laptop as before, but I forgot to fill the, lab, the screen with, let's say, red color, right? I just moved to the hand tool, I manipulated object, and I don't have the possibility to fill the screen with any color now. But what you can do is to use this bucket fill tool, select the color that you like, let's say red, and tap the space that you want to fill with color. Well, that's interesting what happened. It's a, it's a broken screen, I'm, I'm sorry about that. Things do break here sometimes. Um, what is interesting is that the color field is actually adding additional objects. So if you want to understand how it works, it's actually creating a new object on top of existing one. So in reality, I would be, it would be possible to remove that color that I added to the picture just by deleting it from uh, this, uh, object hierarchy that was created. So one, one more time, when I'm moving this, it's actually a computer that I draw together with the color uh, that is on top of the screen. So I can ungroup it and actually see all of those elements separately. So it's the same with the sun. Let's say if I want to remove the fill of the sun, I can ungroup the sun and just Take this away. 
So that's the fill um, uh, tool for you. Let me see what's there in the process. So we showed you how to draw, how to fill empty spaces of the paint bucket, and now you already know how to move uh, your sketch notes to reposition them on the canvas. We also showed you how to use Inspector, uh, but not how to use what we call here uh, clip art. A clip art is, is something that during sketch noting you might want to use quite often as it allows you to easier add to the canvas the objects that you need. So you can create and explain everything, your own library of objects that you can reuse later on. Let me show you how such library can look like. When we're adding objects to the canvas of Explainer Everything, we're using this button. This is Add Media button. And it, it allows you to take any file you have on your drive, but also, or cloud storage, but also it allows you to go to clip parts to see the library of symbols that you have. And those are symbols that I added. Uh, those are custom symbols that I created some time uh, ago but also you can see those standard symbols that you can use while sketch noting. So graphical representation of laptop, uh, mine was silly as I can add something like this, much better, would you agree? Or let's say what we need, maybe uh, we're going to do the sketch note on animals and I need a cat, no problem, you have a cat here. In reality, if you like something better, let's say that's your representation of a laptop and you want to keep it, store it for later use, and you want to later add it uh, to the canvas in no time, all you need to do is to use Inspector, select your object, and use Add to Clipboard. So I do it now, and as you see, this object just sort of jumps to that icon, that means, that this um, graphical representation of mine is already stored here in the clip part. So when I'm sketch noting and I need a laptop, I can just tap one, two, three, and I'll have it just like that. Right, so it's pretty useful when um, to like, if you want to uh, sketch note, you don't really have to sketch, right? Um, if you build your library of sketch notes prior to the meeting, because you know sometimes it can go very very fast, right? So you want to be you want to be um, effective in in creating those re representations. So what you can do instead is you can build your own library of sketch notes, <clears throat> and then connect them so that you're prepared for every type of situation. For example, Rashan sketch notes feature those type of, you know, like uh, representations of people. So he doesn't really draw that usually, he just inserts mm, those uh, small uh, folks onto the canvas and then just creates a new representation from that, like, like from that simple sketch note. So it's still creating this, this, um, this image from the set of Prepared um, sketch notes that he that he's done. Well, I, I think that's one of the one of the key key parts, right? Coming up with your own representations for things that you uh, envision, like I kind of connect to the concept that you're talking about, that people right. are uh -huh. hearing about, right? Yeah. Uh, building a library. So explain everything allows you to build your own library and reuse those assets with, without um, having to. Um, go through that, that process uh, again and again. Right. It saves time and it allows you to create more complex drawings from a simple element. And I'll show you in a second um, how you can uh, do that in no time. But also what is important is that with Explainer Everything you can create your custom library. And if you have a group account, you can replicate this custom library of icons um, to other participants of your group. So everyone starts to have an experimenting ready-made library of symbols for their use. So you can think of clip art 
as as a go-to place for story. There's symbols, representations, but also templates or other media that you want your team members to have at hand. Uh, so back to the presentation, because this is what you mentioned uh, how Rashan uses um, the library of symbols. This is quite useful. So, so I saw during one example that he kind of like, you know, create a representation of meeting using symbols like people, right? Let's me, let me create a drawing of a person, a very simple one. And if I add it to the canvas, and now I want to, let's say I'm not, I don't have it anymore. And now I want to create, let's say, gathering of people. All I need to do is to pull one, or maybe I need, how many I need? I just took three, right? And I already have a gathering of people, right? If they are sitting behind a table, I can create that also in no time. That's the table. Or maybe, maybe for more sophisticated effect, I want to have a table filled with white color. So that's the fill color. Maybe let's let's do it yellow. So you see, you, so you see the point here. So I'll do the table with uh, you know, a solid yellow fill, and now I'll add it to the canvas to the clip part. Sorry. I'll remove those objects, and let's say we have a meeting of. Six people. Oh, sorry. <laughs> that was their boss, I believe. Right? We have a meeting uh, of, of six people sitting behind the table. And there you have it. All you need to do is to add their names. That was Bart. And I also duplicate those. And I can go, this is Kuba. This is Martin and so forth. And by this, during the meeting, you can quickly create drawings that you need to represent what is going on. You can see how, how Bart went really, really fast. And this is really the, um, how you can do that. So let's, let's try and recap that, because sure. um, I think that the cool part is where, where you can duplicate things, right? So you duplicate uh, things on the canvas using Inspector. So yes. Inspector is really uh, where you do all sorts of crazy stuff. So where, um, <clears throat> as Bart added the, the clip part, most of you probably know how to do that already, but uh, mm -hmm. it's a pretty useful thing for those who don't know. Um, you can just add a clip, yeah. yeah. So, so let's, let's add, let's say, what we want to replicate here. I love it. Zia Zebra. What, what you need to do yeah, is to select this object using an inspector tool, and you'll find a duplicate uh, feature uh, comment here. So when you hit duplicate, you can basically duplicate it as quick as that, right? So that's what I did. I can either provide from a clipboard the symbol by tapping it uh, several times. So let me do it again with this zebra. And I can add zebras. You don't see it when I tap those zebras, but I actually did that like five times and there is a stack of zebras that I can use on the canvas. You can do all sorts of cool effects with that. So when, when things are stacked, well then you can, yeah. you know, uh, uh, set it all up so then uh, all, you can do all sorts of cool animations with this. So, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So those are simple techniques that we showed you how to sketch note because in reality, that's all you need in order to provide uh, your meeting notes with drawings. The last uh, skill that we listed here is actually uh, ability to pan and move across the canvas with this tool here. This is a scale tool. 
that I was using all the time to um, move across the canvas. So, but I guess once you familiarize yourself with this object nature of explaining everything, that you create an object and it, you can move it with, let's say this one, and you can move it with a hand. But if you create another object that overlaps with existing one, they will move together unless you ungroup them. And you still can do this easily, as I mentioned, with triple tabs of ins or inspector group or, or inspector and this group ungroup function here. Once you familiarize with this, the possibilities are endless to illustrate, type, and also animate. Because remember that you have this record button here. I just pressed the record. So anything I do now on the screen will be captured by explain everything. And I'll show you this in no time. I will just provide some movements, some activity on the canvas. I press stop. And as you see, everything I did illustrating those concepts is now captured together with, with my voice. That's the audio track that you see on the bottom of the screen. So not to complicate things for you, just don't think about recording at all. If you want to have a record of your, let's say, meeting when you were sketchnoting, just press record and try to forget that it's, that it's ongoing. It will just capture audio and all your manipulations, all your movements, all your drawings as you add them to the canvas. So you can later, let's say, accelerate the playback as you can do that. and see how the meeting unfolded. Well, that was a bit too fast. <laughs> but it's, that's, that's all you need to, um, that, that these are all the basic skills that you need. The, 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 the core skill is to how to create, how to use this object nature of explain everything, how to mix media uh, with drawings, the meeting or let's say if you don't want to capture audio you can just mute the microphone that you see here on the bottom of the screen and by this record only those things that you add to the canvas so later on you can browse through the process of sketch noting right all right so if you have any questions we are happy to answer them right now uh if not we will we'll show you some tricks um but yeah i think we have one question that's not really related to um uh today's webinar but we're happy to answer that absolutely um so we got this question from the registration form and it's can you show how to rotate text with the whiteboard tool to reflect vertically so yeah, that's possible. I think with the inspector flip option, so you then just flip the the, the text box, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let us show you that. Okay. Well, this 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 sort of scenario works for for cool text effects, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah. Well, when you type something in. Um, there is an option in Inspector, which you can use. Uh, oh, let's duplicate that. I think so we can create this sort of like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, mirror effect. So now we select Inspector and then flip it left, right, right. Yes. So now it's mirrored. Um, so this is an option. This is an option in the Edit tab uh, of the Inspector. So now we're going to flip this one like this, right? Yep. Maybe we want this to be. Yeah, it, it gets it gets crazy. So. Yeah, and this we want to flip like like that, right? Mm -hmm. The Y gets in the way. So you might want to like lower the. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. Yeah. Oh, there we go. 
just like that. In the reality, when you're using such um, complex whiteboard as this one, it's almost it almost has the possibilities of of video editors. Uh, for when we work with expander everything, we often skip using you know those editing tools to provide simple graphics because we know how to use uh, the tool to do the job, the whiteboard to do to, to do the job. All right, um, Sven asks a question. So I think it's very related, Sven, uh, because as Sven asks, it's kind of unrelated. Oh, so so the first uh, thing Sven said was, uh, I love that the paint buckets work on pictures. Oh yeah, it's perfect mm -hmm. for graphs in math, math classes. So yeah, you can do that. It is. So mm -hmm. so you can use a paint bucket if if the color is solid. Um, you can use the paint bucket on pictures or PDFs, and then it will fill the like like that. Right, it's a pretty neat trick, um, and the fun fact is that you can ungroup those, so then you can move those things that you fill. Right? Oh yes, of course. So I ungrouped that, and now I ended up with the like set of rectangles. Yeah, depending on the resolution of the image, you will get better or worse resolution of those. Um, yeah, you, know. and you, so, can, you can clearly see that, that that's the resolution issue here. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. You can do that and 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 like create some weird shapes with 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 your pictures. Just, so just remember that the shapes needs to be closed. So, for example, filling this light bulb here might be difficult. No, it's not. That's possible. I think still. If, you, if you try it on the bottom part, then you will. Yes. Get the, yeah. You'll get this information that please close the drawing. Yeah. Yeah. If it's not closed, you won't be able to. So we wanted to avoid the situation where you, your whole canvas would be filled with color. And since canvas is infinite, it's not possible. Mm -hmm. So the next question Sven had is, how can I ungroup parts of a mind map? I default to copying parts and erasing the original parts and was wondering if there is an easier way. So this is a, this is a cool thing that we really didn't really show. Because, um, well, the thing is, and explain everything, if your mind map well, it depends on, on how you how you import that, right? Because if you are using an existing mind map, then probably erasing and copying uh, or using cutout tool um, is probably a good way. But if you're creating a mind map and explain everything, we'll show you how to how to continue drawing while separating um, while separating images. So, as you've seen before, the um, the drawings kind of become objects when you select um, another tool, right? So say if you select the hand tool, the drawing will stick to the text, right, as, as Bart did. But if you stick with the, with the draw tool and try and draw multiple um, elements, they will be a one thing, right, like that. Now this is one object now. Yeah. So if even if I disconnect it, it's going to become a one object. And obviously drawing branches, you don't want to do that. Yeah. So uh, in order to continue drawing by by like keeping them separate, you need to use the button on the bottom of the draw tool menu, which is it's not very obvious, and we are aware of that. We're working on an improvement in this, and it should be it should be much easier soon uh, but it's, it's it's almost finished so. yeah so <laughs> but but for now but for now for now the way you use you, you separate uh drawings is you you just draw something and then while drawing without changing the tool you just select this check mark and it will separate from the following drawings you see the check mark here right so let me show you how it works so let's say i want to create a branch here i just did the drawing and now I click this tick button. And you see, uh, it showed me with this uh, outline that a new object was created. So again, I'm, I'm hitting here this tick button. And then again. Oh, we should incorporate sound effects, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> I just added one <laughs> with my mouth. So, so now, if you look at this, some uh, stick to the... Um, uh, the center of the drawing, you can group them together, but essentially those are separate objects now, as you see with the outline. So I can ungroup them easily 
and move as I like. So if you're cautious, you can go by doing new elements of your mind map so they stick to the branches that you draw, like this. Let's say I want to create a two new one. Or you can alternatively add something that is separated. Oh, no, not, not like this. Add something that is separated by a tiny distance from the last object, and it shouldn't stick like this. Yeah, yeah. And if you are importing some, um, uh, like an image or a PDF, then um, the, I think the easiest way would be to use Scalout tool. But um, yeah, yeah, yeah it, it will take a, a bit more work. This is like the, the I, I think it's a great solution. And it's a great solution for sketch notes too, because if you are like in the, in the middle of the meeting or in the middle of the presentation, uh, and you want to, you know, keep keep on drawing. Then this this button will definitely help you, just because you will not have to move it around before you jump to another sketch note. So yeah. But let's say let's say you want to use because uh, those um, object hierarchies can be sometimes quite difficult. I mean, they can be complex. So let's say you want to simplify this and just take out from the picture one element without even caring for the hierarchy of objects. You don't know. Let's say if this fellow here with the head in the form of a light bulb was created by using different drawings, what it is, maybe it's an existing element of document. So at any time you can use this cut out tool that is actually a replicator tool and cut it, cut the element that you like from the drawing like this. I wonder what will happen if, if the like, background animates. That's interesting. Let's see. Oh yeah, it included the. It included the yeah, stroke yeah, yeah. here. Okay, but that way you can, you know, take from this, you know, like here, like in the, like from from this huge illustration. If you want to take something out, and I just need this book, you can do that. No, oh, sorry, my mistake. Uh, where is it here? You can do that like this. And you can take the object out. All right. Like this. There we go. All right. Yeah. The, I think uh, Sven's happy. The, yeah. The, okay. He says that. Not to have him <laughs> talks. And he says that we should totally do sound effects. So. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and we got another question from Carl Heinz Morton. Um, uh, that you came. So. Yeah. Are you going to share the webinar file? I'm interested in reading some of those articles and watching the videos you added in this file. So, uh, the, actually, we will we? Um, <laughs> not sure yet. Uh, but um, I'm happy to provide you with all the links to those articles and um, and the videos. So. Um, yeah, we'll we'll share that in an in an email. I I don't think we can like share the the, the actual um actual contents of those those articles like that. Um, but yeah, we'll share the links to them uh, in the email. That includes also the recording of the webinar. So yeah. And there's another question. Are you using some something like night mode, Germany? So I'm fam unfamiliarly dark. It's intriguing. <laughs> so. That's why, because you know, we're showing all of this with, of, with this new version of Explain Everything that runs with, on iOS 13, and it ha it contains a dark mode. You know, so instead of whiteboards, we're using dark boards today, and I'll show you how once you upgrade to iOS 13 and update your app, how you can change the mode is actually uh, hidden somewhere here. Oh, here it is. You see, I'm. I have a dark mode turned on. If I turn it off, I, let's see what happens. Yeah, we're back to the reality. <laughs> yeah. So we, we got some questions about turning off dark mode and turning it on. Um, it's a default iOS setting. So once you select dark mode here, uh, it will change the, the way the app looks. So yeah, that's the, that's the newest addition to iOS 13. And we made it and explain everything, too, because we think it's cool. We love, you know, using those dark parts <laughs> of the dark board. <laughs> <laughs> 
All right. Um, yeah, we have some time for, for a question or two. So if you have uh, a question, we're happy to answer that. Uh, that actually, I, I had an idea to cover the, the, um, the separating images, but we've already answered that. Uh-huh, OK. So we'll be we'll wait for a minute uh, for questions. Um, but come is, there, is there anything else? That what, we want? What's your favorite way of using uh, the dartboard? The dartboard. What's when do you use it? Um, well, I think for me it's, uh, it's at, well I use it mostly in one-on-one -on -one meetings. Mm -hmm. So it's almost like a piece of paper. 2.0 like you know so it's not only that we can just talk with with our folks that explain everything about some some crazy concept it's really mm -hmm. it's really making it easy to uh, uh to share your thinking like my friend from um from the drive team uh i, I ask some stupid question and he has uh you know all the sort of because this is a huge project and he has to I go into the details and answer how the flow works and so on and so forth and so how the back back end works and I'm like I cannot follow you so he just grabs explain everything and 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 explains that to me visually which is really cool so yeah that's the was that's he using was he using recording no no really. okay. I mean we use recording um, I use recording mostly when answering people's questions that I get uh, from my email that's the like. That's the perfect solution because I can personalize them. Uh, I think you, some of you folks here, um, have probably got my uh, got answers from me with explain made with explain everything. So I can just hello Frank. Here's how you do it. Blah 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 blah. And our support team also uses it as well in this way, which is which is really great because we can explain everything with explain everything. So yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that that, that definitely helps in 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 and clarifying those complex thoughts that you might have, yeah. So if you're a teacher and you're providing lectures, think about providing a material, a supplementary material, and being an explain everything recording where you sketch noted and explained um, those ideas when the recording was on. For me, actually, when I was doing my studies, I, I was constantly daydreaming about possibility to rewind what the teacher said, you know? So this is a window of opportunity, a way to look into someone's thinking by just a simple possibility of coming back in time and see those concepts unfolding. Think about this. So it's not only a tool to sketch note and do graphically uh, stunning uh, things to illustrate concepts, but it's also um, a window of opportunity for those that could would want to hear something again and see those concepts unfolding to understand them better. Right. Yeah. Um, oh, we got two questions. Um, okay. So does explain everything look to make teachers ambassadors or trainers? Yeah, absolutely. We're looking into that possibility. I mean, we just started. The, um, if you go to our blog, uh, you will see two posts about. Uh, one is about the tutoring using explain everything, and the other one is the one I linked in the chat um, about sketch noting. Well, these are so-called expert posts. So uh, these will appear. And we've contacted some people that had used explain everything, and uh, we call them experts. So because they had some very interesting use cases, like David's um, um, tutoring, Rashan sketch noting. We got two more coming, and maybe even more. Um, so this is some sort of like our um, our go to for now, and we'll probably expand that. But I, we cannot really tell how it's going to you know, work. But yeah, uh, that's something that we'd love to do because we see people use explain everything every day and that have very interesting uh, scenarios to share. But we want to make sure that we can provide you with, um, with proper care, I would say, uh, so, the, so that we can like, um, help the community and, and make sure that Someone who has who who is a explainer expert is 
actually actually feels that way. That what we want to go for, and um, that's something that we will explore uh, in the near future probably. Yeah. And also from our perspective, this is a fantastic experience to provide others with the stories that those experienced users want to share. And sometimes I'm surprised how it's kind of being used yeah. in the classroom or beyond the classroom. So we're, we're super excited to learn your stories, your ways of using it. So perhaps we can share with others yeah. for inspiration. You can, you can always contact that in, 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 in this, um, like in, in terms of like experts, you can always contact us. Uh, uh, at connect at explain everything.com so we can have a little chat and learn more about your ideas and how you use explain everything and yeah we can we can then later share uh those use cases your ideas your um scenarios of use with others so yeah and content so they will appear in the app soon so yes mm -hmm. so we think that it's a great idea to share those stories with with people um that you know it's going to be featured on the home screen of the app so that new users will open the uh, open the explain everything else see those expert articles right there so they can immediately jump onto a template they created and mm -hmm. learn about their stories and use cases so it's easy for them to just you know learn more we realize that it's sometimes intimidating when you see just a blank canvas with uh, such vast number of tools so we want others just inexperienced users to learn from experts by following their steps that's why the tutorials and the videos to make it easier to acquire some skills of using this everything so there's another question about pricing uh can you elaborate more on the pricing model please i would just need to use explain everything occasionally Mm -hmm. um, depending on how you want to use it, you might stick to just the free plan. Um, uh, we know that it limits you to, uh, I think it's three projects right now. Excuse me. But um, one minute of recording, three projects, yes. And, but you can use collaboration as well. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, so, depending on how you want to use it, um, so our plan is, is um, monthly or yearly subscriptions. Um, and that's what we're currently going with. Um, so depending on how you would like to use it, um, we can find a, a solution for you. So I'll, I'll send an email to you and contact with you with our sales team so they can talk with you and, and uh, well, find a way um, for you to use Explain Everything, for sure. So yeah, Fantastic. it just needs more, more details, a little bit to, to learn more about how you use Explain Everything. Um, so the folders, can you okay. mm -hmm. in folders to better organize content? Also, yeah, we would yes. love to do that. Um, that's something that 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 we uh, see, and that's something that we want to improve. And yeah, that's that's so sorry because uh, I think we didn't repeat the question. So can we be able to make folders in folders to better organize content in the app itself? So yeah, uh, that's yeah. on our roadmap. It's not. Currently, we're not currently implementing that, but we see the um, the possibilities of that solution, and and we'd love to 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 have that. The logic of you know evolution of explainer everything uh, is that it will follow the main use cases. So those things that we illustrate with expert articles or that we um, inform about on the web webinars, we will keep improving and folders and folders is, is an element of one of those use cases. So it's definitely going to appear at some point of time. All right. Uh, Sven says, this is my fourth webinar and it blows me away how you guys can always instantly answer, answer all questions. Great work. Thank you, Sven. It's our pleasure. Really. Thank um, you very much. And thank you for coming. Yeah. So, um, yeah, this, I guess it's a wrap. Yeah. And um, thank you everyone for joining us today. Uh, just a quick reminder that we have another <laughs> webinar tomorrow as well that couldn't, wasn't, we were unable to uh, have last week. And it's going to talk about a lesson ideas. ideas. Yeah. Um, so you will learn about um, lesson ideas for explain everything and how you can incorporate explain everything in your teaching. It's going to be fantastic. I saw that uh, templates that Sam is going to share with you tomorrow. So for those that are, are interesting, interesting in how to um, 
not only go digital but also provide active learning opportunities this is a thing to um, to see and learn from it's actually quite crowded do we have yeah. still free spaces oh, for that one yeah but if you if it happens that you cannot register to the webinar tomorrow and you're still interested in those lesson ideas we will continue to provide uh this webinar it's there will be a recording of the webinar, but there will be also another session, so you can ask your questions. I see those. Yeah, well, we're about the limit currently, but not everyone uh, is joining. So it's like 50% people who sign up that they come. Mm -hmm. So they will, if we have any technical issues, we'll, we'll let you know, but um, hopefully this time it won't happen. So no, yeah. <laughs> it won't happen this time. <laughs> All right. All right. So thank you very much. Thank once you again. very much for tuning in. We hope you like it. Contact us if you'd like to work with us and share your story as we'll be happy to broadcast that and provide inspirations to others. Awesome. Jeremy, thank you. And Teresa, I will, I will, Teresa, I will send you an email. You'll all get an email from me um, with the recording and with the links included, the articles and, uh, and videos that we shown today so you can watch them uh, whenever you like. And we'll do our best to support your teaching with our technology. Thank you. Thank you very much. And see you next time. See you.